welcome back to my channel welcome if you're new here my name is alexis so in today's video it's going to be a, like a chill sit down i'm going to talk about a few things today i'm really going to talk about things no one tells you about the nursing profession you know you may have these ideas or these you know assumptions before school or even during school but once you get to that floor baby you're shook it's not it's not all as cracked up to be and there's a lot of assumptions in this profession so and there still are even though i've been like a nurse seven ish years people family friends that aren't in the profession they assume a lot of things about it and i'm just like no and i see a lot of new grads that are coming to the floor they're like shook they're not really prepared it really is a big learning curve a big culture shock when you get to the floor so that's what i'm going to talk about today i have a long list child there's a lot there really is and so if i glance down that's because i don't want to forget anything so let's jump into it so a little bit of background i've been a nurse for about seven years i was a tech before that I started out with my LVN in Louisiana. I basically worked in like home health and inpatient physical rehab at a hospital. Um, and then I moved here to Houston. I started a job at MedSurge. I moved to Houston, what, 2017, 2018? So I started a job in MedSurge, and, but I switched to oncology in 2019 and that's where I've been. I recently did leave the bedside. I'm working from home. Yes, I did work today in my cute little sweatsuit. Insert a picture if I want to right here. Um, so that's what I've been doing. If I need to go, I go see the patients in clinic, but mostly I can work from home so that I'm very happy right now. But I think you need those years at the bedside. You need that experience, especially in med surge. I say this all the time. That's going to be a huge foundation. But you know, a lot of people go into specialties. They know that's where they want to be. They have an idea. You know, your path is your path. But I'm going to share with you today some, you know, tips, assumptions, things that I kind of wish I knew or I wish people knew before they jump into this profession because it's not meant for everyone. First thing, major thing, what I hate most that people assume is I'm rich. I have a lot of money. Nursing does not pay what everyone thinks it pays. Like I feel like people see these like Instagrammers, these IG nurses or whatever, making like six figures or driving Mercedes or Escalades, whatever they want to be driving these days. And it's not all that. Like, no. Basically, when you graduate to new grads, start off at the bottom of the barrel. Nursing, when the real money is, is when you get experience, you go into these specialties, you get certifications. Maybe you do travel nursing or work with like an agency, and that's a whole other ball game right there. I need to do a video on that. Um, so there are ways to make a lot of money in nursing, but most of the people I know have multiple nursing jobs. You know, they're trying to provide for themselves or their family. Things are expensive these days. I don't know any nurses that are like rich, you know. I mean, it's a good profession. It's stable. You're going to make a good living, but you're not going to be like what people assume. You always have this money. You're a nurse, blah, blah, blah. No, honey, I got bills. I'm paying to go back to school. I'm paying to do this. You know, this hair ain't cheap. Like, girl... Another thing about nursing is the staffing. I never even thought about that like before, you know, when I was a tech, yeah, but I never really thought like it would always be bad, especially this past like, you know, year was what's been going on. You're on a work short, prepare to take care of all your patients by yourself, no tech, or, you know, you can't find help on the floor. So be aware of that. You're gonna have some bad days where staffing is horrible all of your patients need something at once and it's just going to be a complete crap show complete crap show every day is not going to be a good day you will have good days and bad days so that's one thing to consider it be prepared to work short every nurse i know has worked short it's going to happen to you don't think you're going to have a cakewalk of a shift every shift that you go into also don't think that you're going to know it all i ran into these people in nursing school they just thought they knew everything and it's not the case. You're, you know, textbook smart and actually being in a situation, being able to run a code, being able to call this out, being able to handle different personalities on the floor, different patients, that goes a long way. 
you know, and don't just be too overconfident, too cocky, but also don't let people run over you. That's one thing, you know, I find with a lot of new grads, they don't know how to find their voice. You're going to have to have a backbone, find your voice, or people are going to railroad over you. Those texts are going to be like, oh, you can get your vitals. You can do this. I don't need to do that. Doctors, nurse practitioners, they're just going to make you look a fool. Stay on your ground. Have your confidence. Know how to speak up for yourself. That is something a lot of new grads struggle with. So that's something to really take into consideration. Another thing to take into consideration, like I mentioned, working with different people, there's a lot of different personalities. You know, just with our patients and their family members, like no one really can prepare you to deal with like some of the foolishness I have dealt with, like family members threatening to sue you, sue the hospital, you know, threatening to sue the doctor or asking all these questions or like your patient actually taking other medications that they had on them and ODing, dealing with prisoners, dealing with patients that are racist, like they don't prepare you for that in school. And it's really kind of like learn as you go, a learning curve. Like I have been threatened by so many patients family members we've had fights we've had people having sex this is a problem for me. Had people smoking bringing drugs all kinds of stuff homeless people coming back from the street patients coming back with like days later talking about i can't handle my family member what is the doctor gonna do like you name it i have probably pretty much seen it and it's i could even write a book like i can go into this on hours like there's so much craziness especially when you work like med surge at the bedside like day shift even night shift honestly but it there are just no words for the type of craziness and drama and school did not prepare me for that i never thought i would half the stuff that happened to me would even like happen so that's something to think about going into that to prepare to work with different personalities you know nursing is not just you know the nurses or the techs you got to deal with you know case management therapists respiratory therapists you know administration the chaplain all these different personalities and you kind of have to navigate that a lot of things too when you're a new grad people will take advantage of you and get you to do things that aren't your job especially case management i hate to knock on case management but i had this one case manager at my old job oh my god why was i always doing her job like calling these facilities getting all this done i'm like i have minutes to pass this is really your job like i don't care if it's 3 45 on a friday you need to be handling your business like so certain things like that just know your background know your stance and then therapist oh jesus christ not to knock on therapists but you know i ran into them several times you know taking my patients setting them up for dinner letting them eat and the patient's diabetic or them not listening to me like the patient is looking woozy he doesn't need to do therapy for a little bit and they're like well he needs to get this therapy hours they pick the patient up try to do it the patient falls or you know passes out or we have to run a code or like you know they'll even overreact sometimes or like you just did a new dressing change you go in there the dressing change looks like crap like it just you just have to you know know how to navigate those things stand your ground be like you know I know your position, but this is my specialty because I've had a lot of therapists too try to tell me how to do my job and pump your brakes. Hold up. Gee, gee, gee. We went to school for two different things. We're all here for a common goal, but let me handle this. You handle whatever it is you're hired to do. This isn't your lane. Like, mm -mm, mm -mm. things like that. And you know, it's good to have a good relationship with them, but don't let people walk all over you, you know, stand your ground in that sort of sense. You know what's best for your patient at the end of the day. So advocate for your patient. Another thing that can go into that, speaking of friends and family, a lot of my friends and family ask for like advice, like what do you think this is? How much of this medication? What are these medication side effects? Like, should I get this procedure? I'm feeling like this. Should I go? Oh, no, 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 no. I, when I'm off the clock, I'm off the clock. Don't come in my inbox asking me for anything. I'm not a prof professional in that sense. I'm not a doctor. I can't diagnose anything over the phone. You know, mm -mm, mm -mm. it just, you kind of take that and with a grain of salt or whatever, it's up to you if you want to give kind of advice, but I'm like, no, mm -mm, no. Even my mom, I'm like, you need to go see the doctor. Honestly, that's just out of my jurisdiction right now. 
good things about nursing, you know, good assumptions and not really good assumptions, but good things that, you know, no one really told you about is that nursing is a really good profession, especially there's so many, you know, areas of nursing, you know, you can do travel nursing, you can do agency, there's labor and delivery, there's cardiology, you know, cath lab, these outpatient clinics, you can work day, night, different shifts, you can work, you know, doing a whole bunch of different things. There's life flight, if you're into that kind of action, peds, that's a whole different uh, ball game. And it really is kind of like how your personality, you know, I think it goes a lot with personality. And you know, you may try a certain type area of nursing, and you may realize, no, it's not for me. You may have this dream in your mind that, you know, I was just born to be a NICU nurse, like I'm just gonna, you know, do this and then you get there and it's not meeting your expectation, don't feel bad, find you a new pathway. There's plenty of them, you know, but every specialty, the nurses that have been there for years usually are like, yeah, this is my passion. You know, it really, if you don't have a passion for nursing and you're just getting into it for the money, don't do it. You really have to be passionate because you're going to be dealing with a, it takes, you're going to be dealing with a lot of stuff. It really does take a special person to clean someone's body fluids. Like, you know, not just number one and number two, but like throw up, secretions, blood, phlegm. I've literally had all of that at some point on me. I even got someone's like GI contents on my shoes. You know, they're number two on my shoes, blood. So if you're like prissy, I wanna say, and you know, scared to get dirty, there are areas of nursing where that may not happen, but if you have a certain idea, you're just gonna come in, sit down, you know, collect a paycheck, it's gonna be so fun, or you know, I'm gonna be a travel nurse, I'm gonna to travel to all these different places, and it's gonna be easy. No, it's not, especially travelers. They give them like either the worst assignments, like people are like, well, you're getting paid more, you're gonna work harder for this money. So that's some things to, you know, think about. It's not always ideal, it's not always a good day, it's not an easy profession at all, but it is a well-respected profession. So I thought up until like, you know, the year of 2020, a lot of people didn't have a lot of respect for healthcare workers, I would say, that's just my opinion. But, you know, generally it is like nurses really are the backbone. We take care of so many things. That's another thing no one tells you. We are literally everything. We're like the secretary, even though we have secretaries and techs, we do that too. We like, we'll clean the patient up, put them in the shower. I've done patients hair. I've, you know, gone downstairs, they lost their phone, or they lost their teeth, I'm digging through the trash to find something. You know, I've called and talked with their family members. I've, you know, found paperwork that they need for their insurance company. I've, you know, you just done, I have done it all. Like, I'm their therapist sometimes. They're just like, I want someone to sit in here and talk to, chit chat. Like, literally, you wear so many hats as a nurse, it's, it's insane. So that's something to be prepared about too. Like people will just randomly confide in you, ask you things, and you just kind of have to be like on your game. Another thing is, and I can't stress this, stress this enough, always read your patient's chart because especially if you work during the day, these doctors and different people are making rounds and they'll just out the blue, you'll be in the middle of the hallway walking and they'll be like, hey, so-and-so in this room, what's going on with this? Come with me to do rounds, like and asking you questions and you're just like, huh? You're going to look dumb. So just go ahead, read that chart, know what you're talking about, you know, take a deep breath, get out your paper, always have a, your paper in your pocket. I always kept it everywhere with me. I don't want to walk somewhere, have this doctor, whoever waiting on me. So that's another tip. Be on your game. Don't not look in your patient's chart. You're just here to pass me as you're just, you're just terrible. That's all I'm going to say. You're just terrible. Another assumption a lot of people too don't tell you is that it can't, sorry, I'm looking at my list. It can be really hard on your body and it can be hard on you mentally. Like your body, especially working rehab and dealing with people with like strokes or who has surgery, they can't move or whatever. Like you're having to really, especially stroke victims, they can't move like half their body. So you're making up for that, you know, and it's really hard 
transferring these people and doing these things, it can be hard on your body and body mechanics. It can be hard just working like three, four, twelves in a row. You know, I try not to do that, but it happens sometimes. So, and with your sleep schedule, so that's something to be considerate of, you know, too, if you're thinking about getting into the profession. Girlfriend, you're gonna get your steps in. You're gonna be doing some physical labor, all kinds of things. It's not just an easy peasy, cushy job. Another thing that goes into that, it can be hard mentally. Um, no one can really prepare you for that. You know, a lot of times patients may cry. They may die. They're family members. You have to console them when they die. Um, you know, cleaning up the person once they're deceased and, you know, different things like that. Especially my field now, a lot of people that have cancer, it completely disrupts their life. Like literally, they'll just be living a normal day. Sorry, I have an eyelash. Um, a normal day and then they feel a pain or they just go to the doctor for some random thing and boom they have cancer it completely like disrupts their whole and you know people when people hear cancer they just think oh my god I'm gonna die um, it completely disrupts their whole entire life so a lot of people have you know different ways of coping and they're just like going through it they can't believe this is happening to them you know and they kind of will lean on you for that and you know this past year has been rough for everybody. I don't think anyone could have prepared for that at all. And a lot has happened in this year, a lot of sadness, a lot of loss. And that was very hard on people like mentally. It's gonna take us a while to recover from all of this, but a lot of things can weigh on the staff, on your, on your nurses mentally. And that's something to think about. Burnout is real, compassion fatigue is real. All of that is real and it's not talked about enough you know in school or just anyways in the workplace like that wasn't really talked about you know up until recently so i think that's good that that's getting out there that you know it is a very hard profession on you mentally and physically and we need support and need help another thing to think about too when you enter into your nursing profession especially when you work in the hospital they want you to come um participate in all these little like boards or little meetings you know like groups like one will be clapsy one will be you know falls one will be like patient advocacy they want to see you participate in that thing so if you are like me i really don't like extracurriculars i'm here to do my job let me go home just be prepared for that because they're gonna come up to you management they're gonna ask you to do something like that so just be prepared another thing about management so I really never thought about like dealing with management or dealing with, you know, the director's personalities and things like that. You know, my job in Louisiana was good until they got like a new manager and she really didn't, you know, when I transitioned from like LVN to RN, she really didn't like think I was ready to, you know, be on the floor or be a charge nurse or anything. And she really didn't have faith in me, but I'm like, you literally just got here a few months ago. You haven't been here, you know, since I worked this past like three, four years and when I was a tech, but whatever. So, you know, that really did give me the push to, you know, find a new job and come to Houston. And my med surge job, you know, pe different people have different experience with experiences with management. That manager loved me. She listened to all my ideas. You know, she would like give good feedback. She told me all the time how good of a charge nurse I was. Like she loved me. I could do no wrong in her eyes. But I really did like that, you know, she would listen if i told her something she would step into action and actually it wasn't just fluff be like well what can we do to do it she'd actually be like okay well let's go around and you know i'll let you be in charge of this this is what we need to do blah 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 so you know my current job at the different department the department i'm in now in research is like easy peasy good you know i'm new so i don't have any like the feel of the land but my last one you know our manager was new to being a manager you know and i feel like she really wasn't open to any ideas especially ones that i had because i tell you like it is like you know i don't sugarcoat it i'm like this is the problem with this nurse that nurse this policy that policy this med this isn't being done that isn't being done this is dangerous blah 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 like literally i would just say it like that and you know she would go around and ask like you know a charge nurse that you know she trusted more or she felt like because the unit was like 
not open when I got there or I wasn't trained there or something like that so she knew those other people a little bit longer so I just felt like that was just weird like and she just wouldn't really take action so I really didn't like that so a manager that's the one thing you know an assumption a manager really can make or break a unit so that's something to think about if you hear management is terrible nine times out of ten they're terrible go somewhere else so you know you'll find that out as you you know go through your nursing career you could just love your co-workers you could love you know helping out the patients you could be fulfilled but if that manager is terrible they're gonna make your job horrible and this was the case at my last one so that's all the tips i think i have right now that's basically all the tips assumptions you know everyone has their different journeys just be open to it you know step into your new job with a lot of confidence knowledge know that you got this remember you're gonna have good days and bad days and you're gonna have like really crazy things happen to you and you know as long as you don't make it about oh, it's just about the money and you know garner all your knowledge learn a lot of good things and you'll be meant to be here you know every place has their bad apples and you know there are like bad apple nurses but this profession is really good at weeding out the weak so consider that anyways if you guys have any other questions about what it's like to work at the bedside what it's like in nursing how it is to work through this whole pandemic type situation any questions any suggestions hit them up down below follow me on instagram things like that sorry if this video was all over the place i just felt like sitting down and talking like i didn't feel like doing anything like too scripted this is how i am we're just we're just chit chatting we're just spilling the tea so you know hit me up um if you have anything else to say have a good weekend have a good day and bye <music>